Imagine having the life of your dreams. Not temporary cash and glory, but happiness and inner peace. Explore new ways to be a creator and take your own journey into greatness. Is it possible? What does it take to make that happen? It takes the person known for extreme results. He's called the cage breaker and the ultimate catalyst. Coming back from the brink of death and now crushing it for himself and his clients, this is your Ultimate Life Podcast with Kellen Flukiger. Hello and welcome today to episode 518 of your Ultimate Life. We're starting a new pillar in the Palace of Power. Oh, goody, I love new pillars. This is the fourth pillar in the Palace of Power. And remember what we're doing here. We're trying to figure out, discuss, talk about, discover, reveal, whatever the right word is, what causes us to have personal power, power sufficient to create the changes we need to have the ultimate life. Now, you may be living the ultimate life right now. Most people I talk to don't feel like they are. In fact, rarely do I talk to someone who says, yes, I'm absolutely living the ultimate life. Now, I know a couple people, I feel that way, and I know a couple of others that do, but I don't know very many that truthfully feel that way. They always feel like something's missing. Here's the key to understand this. You can have that today. You don't have to wait. No one can prevent you from having it, and you can have it right now. I keep saying that, and I do it because I hope that it comes to sink into you how true that is. You can have the ultimate life today. What is that? Well, I define the ultimate life as a life of purpose, prosperity, and joy. When I ask people about that, as some of the guests that have been on the podcast and others, often they include wealth, they include a certain level of health. Uh, often I'll hear the word freedom. And when I dig into that, um, it's usually I can do whatever I want. I'm not bound by anything or some version of that. And you know what? You already have freedom. If what people mean by freedom is I can do whatever I want, there are no consequences, and I have enough money, reach, time, and power that whatever I do doesn't have any consequences that I somehow think I don't want. And I have a squishy definition about whatever that is, you know, that kind of freedom. They don't really know. What that tells me is they've never experienced that. It tells me very quickly they've never been in a situation where they realize how much freedom they have. We are given two things when we come to this world besides the gifts and talents that you have. The two things is you're given time. It might be one minute if you only live one minute or it might be a hundred years. You are given time. You are given the choice, the agency to do with that time what you want to. And when you're an infant, you can't exercise that very well. And you may or may not have been well cared for in that context. But as soon as you get a little older, you get to choose what you do with that time. That is a key thing. And we live so much in the myth that I didn't have a choice. And the subtext of that is... Well, if I didn't go to work, I wouldn't have money. And if I didn't have money, I wouldn't have a place to live. And if I didn't have a place to live, I'd be uncomfortable. And if I'm uncomfortable, it wouldn't be any fun. You know, and on and on, some version of that train. It's, it's just amazing that we just assume all of these things. And you do have freedom not to go to work. Yeah, you'd have to figure out another way to eat. Yeah, you'd have to figure out another place to live. But you still have the ability to choose that. And I'm not suggesting you run around and do reckless things or that I do that. What I am suggesting is if you continue to own the consequences of previous choices. I rented this house for a year or I purchased this and I now have a mortgage. Continuing to own that choice is to lean into it and love it. 
I love this house. I rented it, bought it. I love it. I'm here. I have a great place and I love it. So then there's no have to about it. It's a free will, continuous choice to continue to maintain that. That's not just semantics. It's a true state of energetic being that matters because when you lean into the decisions you've made, then you can love them and you can create that feeling of ownership and it feels good. You can be joyful. That's part of what I mean by having your ultimate life right now. You don't have to wait. Lean in and own the decisions. If you decided to have a relationship and you have children, then lean into that and love them and continue to do that with all your heart and soul and own that decision. If for some reason you decide the work you have isn't uh, you know, satisfactory, then go do something else, but do it with full ownership instead of complaint and feeling like, oh, I had no choice. That just takes away your freedom and your joy. So the life of purpose, prosperity, and joy is how I define the ultimate life. Purpose you find by connecting with the divine, discovering your gifts, and choosing to serve. It's not complicated. People say often to me, well, I don't know, and I need clarity about that. You can have clarity. Create a connection with the divine through meditation, prayer, or whatever is necessary. We live in this kind of thing where it's supposed to, everything's supposed to be instantaneous. Boom, I have everything I want. Right this minute, download, double click. Nothing works like that. Trees don't grow that way. The world doesn't change that way. Sunrise is slow and evolving. The day proceeds through the different stages and then sunset, you know, happens slowly. It's interesting up here in Edmonton where we live right now, in the summertime when the days are really long, the sunset is so slow. The sun seems to barely move the last four hours of the day. And when it does finally go down, the glow at the horizon lasts well past 11 at night and starts on the other side at around three. And so, and I realize we're up toward the north. And so that would even get more so as you moved further north until it never quite goes down uh, when you get above the Arctic Circle or the Antarctic Circle down south. Anyway, you can have your ultimate life today. <clears throat> today, choosing to love what you have is a starting point choosing to create a relationship with the divine discovering your gifts and talents choosing to serve all those can provide you the joy and prosperity and purpose you're looking for right now today we're starting a new pillar and i've talked a lot about ultimate life because that's the reason we're creating this palace of power that's the reason we're putting these pillars today our pillars together, starting today with the fourth one. <clears throat> so the fourth one, that's the middle. You know, there's been one, two, three before us, and then there'll be this one, and then three after it. Today's pillar is the pillar of integrity. Now, someone might say, well, what is integrity? Someone might define it as honesty. Well, that's a little piece of it. Integrity is partly consistency. And what I mean by that is what you see is what you get. Integrity simply is. You can be integrity. You can exude it. it you reek of it in a positive way. You, people know when they're around someone who embodies that principle. Uh, consistency is a powerful element. That means what it seems like you are, you are. What it seems like you meant, you meant. What it seems like you are, you are. That's way beyond just the words of honesty spoken. Everyone knows how people parse words and create nuances and all that sort of thing and then pretend they didn't mislead. None of that is integrity. Integrity is a consistency between what things appear to be and what they are. Another thing about consistent, or excuse me, integrity is we talk about uh, physical things having integrity. The in an integrity of a structure, structural integrity is a word, and that means it is what it seems. A steel beam seems strong, powerful. It will hold up the weight that it's designed to hold up. And it does. And if it fails, you know, an inspection later might reveal interior flaws. It might reveal something that would have predicted that if we had known. 
that's really important as a model for your own personal integrity. The question really simply is, are you being integrity? Is everything with you as it seems? One of the phrases I have in my personal truth and commitment that I've talked a lot about is, I am integrity. And then I don't just leave it there. I go on to explain. I do what I say. I am who I seem with no camouflage, duplicity, or guile. And I add those words because of all the ways that people twist words and meanings and shade things so that it can appear one way and they can do something else and pretend they didn't lie or deceive. Now imagine, uh, we, we had a bridge here in Edmonton that was done redone a few years ago, and about uh, three or four or five months or something after that was finished, there were some flaws discovered in it, and one of the beams bent a little, and there was a lack of integrity. Now, no one put a faulty beam up there on purpose, but there were some hidden flaws in it that caused it to not have structural integrity. So they had to close the road again for another year, and strengthen it or replace it. I can't remember what they did, but they did something to repair that. Now, that was a hidden flaw that revealed itself when stress was put on the bridge as it got finished. Okay, the metaphor, the relationship to our lives, lives and behavior is really clear. You can say to yourself, you're a certain way. I'm honesty, I don't lie. When stress is put on you in a given situation, does your foundation crack? Do do you reveal flaws like that beam on the bridge did? So that's a really important question as you build your palace of power. Because undoubtedly, especially if you discover, develop, and manifest your gifts in a big way, You're going to face stress. You're going to face resistance. There are going to be people who don't want you to succeed. Maybe you have your own set of demons that come up in conversation in your mind. You know, the inner critic and the naysayer, people give it lots of names. Or circumstances will come up that tempt you or test you. Maybe there's money involved, maybe other things. The integrity of your heart needs to be sound or, or the pressure suddenly will reveal flaws like it did with that beam. My description of it in my own PTAC is an attempt to remind me of all the nuances. So I use the word no camouflage and I remind myself and hold myself to that standard that everything I say is clear and ambiguous and I'm not trying to shade it. Uh, or hide something by using a particular word or nuancing the language. It's intended to communicate clearly exactly what I mean with no camouflage. Nothing hidden, no flaws that are hidden. Now that's, you know, a high bar, and I intentionally set that for myself, and I invite you to do the same. Integrity brings peace. It brings a calmness and certainty that you know that everything you've explained, expressed, demonstrated, modeled, and everything is exactly what you mean and there's nothing hidden. I know personally the horrifying feeling of not living that way. I know living for years how it felt hiding stuff when I was having drug problems and other things. When, when my relationships were falling apart, hiding and lying became standard operating procedure. That became misery, standard misery. Living in that state is the opposite of the ultimate life. Now, it doesn't have to be giant things in order to cause uh, internal pain and discord. Another couple of words that I use are duplicity or guile. Duplicity, you know what that means. It means, you know, two-faced. I've got this toward you and something toward someone else. 
That's a thing that I have struggled with, too, talking about, about people one way in one place and another way in another place. That's something I had to learn to stop. I had to fix. I had to change because that was a piece of my pillar that was not strong. Guile means trying to fool somebody. Someone who is without guile is open, transparent, and what you see is what you get. So the standard, I, that's the standard I hold myself to now, delightfully, gloriously, gratefully, and then I never have to think about what I've said or what I've done. Just like Mark Twain said, tell the truth, there's less to remember. So in, in the next seven days, we're going to take apart the pillar of integrity or build it one stone at a time and look at all the pieces that go into a life of integrity so that you can build this fourth pillar in the palace of power. And again, the purpose is so you can have at your immediate and powerful disposal the power you need to create your ultimate life of purpose, prosperity, and joy, and then use your gifts and talents in the service of others as you create this beautiful thing we're calling your ultimate life. Open your heart in this time around. Stand Thank you for listening to today's episode. We hope that you take it deeply into your heart and decide for yourself how you can create anything you desire. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to this podcast and share it with your friends. As always, we'd love to hear your feedback and topic suggestions. Until tomorrow, this is Your Ultimate Life with host Kellen Flukiger. Stand with your heart in the sky and your feet.